Hello everyone. Welcome to CNA, the daily newspaper analysis. So today we are back with a bunch of topics to discuss. But before starting, I just want to convey you all a message that if you want to avail our latest offers in this festive season, do join our WhatsApp group as well as the Telegram group channel directly given in the link below in the comment section. So please do join this group for the interesting offers associated with our courses as well as our discounts as well as offers. So now let's start with today's analysis. The first topic says about ISRO to boost Navic. So now we could see about that ISRO, that is the uh, Indian Space Research Organization, which is undertaking a series of efforts aimed at improving the Navic that is known as the Navigation with Indian Constellation, which is India's indigenous regional navigation satellite system. So now, ISRO is under various plans and efforts so as to give Navic a global reach and to ensure that more people are motivated to install as well as to use it. So Navic, which we all know, is a constellation of seven satellites and is similar to the global positioning system of the US, Galileo of European Union, and GLONASS of Russia as well as Beidou of China. So Navic is currently available for use in the mainland India and within a range of around 1500 kilometers around it. However, we can see that the system is not widely used because mobile phones have not been made compatible with processing its signals. So the government has urged the manufacturers events to add compatibility and has set a deadline of around January 2023. Tab, अभी जैसे हम लोग देखते हैं कि GPS का जो हम लोग का GRPS, GPS का जो हम लोग का map system है, वो ultimately हम लोग का end build आता है mobiles खरीदने के time में, तो today we can see that the government has mandated this manufacturers to install this app mandatorily by January 2023. And according to the chairman of ISRO, we could see that adding such number of band, that is the LI band into Navic would be a major change as this bandwidth is a part of GPS and is the most used bandwidth for civil navigational use. Because we know at present the Navic is only compatible with the L5 and S bands and only provides some of the short codes. So the long codes becomes crucial for the use of the strategic sector as it prevents the signal from being breached. So this is why the government ke dwara bahut zoro se Navic ka istamal karne ke liye government yahan pe bahut jada pressurize kar rahe because we could see various other countries going with the very fast track with its own navigational satellite jaisa maine bola us ka aapka jo glonass uh, us ka jo gps hai then russia ka jo glonass hai then european union ka jo galileo hai chinese ka jo beidou hai even japanese have its own uh, regional navigational system which is known as qzss quasi genet satellite system okay to yahan pe india ko bhi india will become the sixth country which will be having this navic okay and through this navic we will try to even go for some of the neighboring countries and to give the some of the details with respective to their any clauses be it the navigation be it the maps in charting plotting and even going for data capture be it is helping in disaster management be it is helping in some of the fleet management as well as vehicle tracking mobile phone integration as well as some of the precision time period to make some of the power grids as well as to have some of the better view of any resources be it some of the earth resources and be it for protecting the country from any number of aggression. So today we could see about that such tracking devices are very much essential for every respective organization, be it for the respective defense, be it for the home and be it for any organization which is working for the development of the respective country. So this is why the government has been pressurized and we have the bandwidth of the LIs se, we will directly increase the or widen the respective location system of this of this navic okay so here you can see the amount of satellites that is hovering around so this 1500 km range okay and on that basis we will sri lanka ko, even in some point of time we will give to the uh, bangladesh as a nation bhutan nepal aram se myanmar sab ko de sakte hai kal parso agar pakistan bhi chahe to unko bhi hum log directly ye navic system provide kar sakte hai theek hai lekin wo mangege nahi wo alag baat hai theek hai so therefore this navic thing is directly coming under this indian regional navigation satellite system that is the irnss 
और ये यहाँ पे डेडलाइन दिया गया है जनवरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड बट मीडिया रिपोर्ट सजेस्ट इट इज इट इज अनलाइकली बिफोर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव तो दो हजार पच्चीस से पहले तो ये आ नहीं रहा है बिकॉज जनवरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री इज वेरी नियर तो यहाँ तक अभी तक हम लोग का आधा भी लोग आधा क्या टेन परसेंट ट्वेंटी परसेंट तक भी यहाँ पे इंस्टॉल नहीं किया गया मैनुफेक्चर के द्वारा तो अभी देखते हैं ये दो हजार पच्चीस तक का एक लाइक uh, सजेस्टेड like है तो देखते हैं कब आता है तेईस में आता है पच्चीस पे आता है वो तब हम लोग डिस्कस कर लेंगे ठीक है नेक्स्ट आते हैं जी एम मास्टर तो टूडे वी कुड सी दैट ये जितने भी हम लोग का जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड क्रॉप्स है ठीक है तो नाउ वी कुड सी दैट इज जी ई ए सी गिव इट्स नोट फॉर कमर्शियल कल्टिवेशन ऑफ जी एम मास्टर डियर अगेन सो नाउ इट इज जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड क्रॉप्स में सून गेट दिस नॉड and we could see even the activists are pressing against allowing commercial use of this genetically modified crops because you see that the approval of the gm mustard that is the dmh11 to ye jo gm mustard hai isko bolte hain hum log dmh11 theek hai so it is genetic engineering appraisal committee that is the geac which functions in the union ministry of environment forest and climate change might approve the commercial cultivation of this modified mustard and this would be very first time since 2002 for such approval to grow the gm master that is a genetically modified hybrid variety of this master species which is for the consumption by the masses and today we could see that the green signal for gm master was given by the central government in 2017 after trials in punjab agricultural university as well as even the iari that is the indian agriculture research institute however we could see that it remained pending for approval from the environment ministry So now, once the GM Masters is approved, other crop varieties such as BT cotton, BT brinjal, and HT cotton are in line for the note for commercial cultivation. And also, we could see that there is various number of protests directly coming out from activists and farmers because the decisions to approve it took a pause after this activist and farmers bodies approached the Supreme Court to oppose the move. So now we could see that there are various issues that will arise after the approval because the this could directly pose a threat to the crop diversity food security and also the indigenous crop varieties may get threatened and which will severely affect the agrarian sector and the entire biosafety assessment of the gm mustard has been unscientific and no guidelines have been followed but government is of the stand that farmers in many states like haryana use illegal cultivation of such varieties and the move is to normalize such illegalities so the government has been mulling over approval of this genetic editing which would come under the purview of genetic modifications so this genetically modified crops whose dna has been modified through genetic engineering for embedding a new trait to the plant which does not occur naturally in the species and this genetic engineering directly aims to transcend the genus barrier by introducing an alien gene in the seeds so today we see in gms crops in india the bt cotton okay which is very much allowed in india and has two aligned genes from the soil that is bacterium bacillus thuringiensis okay and the on the other hand we could see that bt cotton is derived with the insertion of an additional gene from another soil bacterium iske alawa hum log ka british brinjal yahan pe mila jata hai which is a gene allows the plant to resist attacks of fruits and shoot border and in a british brinjal we can see a gene permits the plant to resist attacks of the fruits and shoot bearers so now if i see about the global variants across the world the gm variants of maize canola soybean this all are very much available so iske advantages kya kya hota hai gm crops ka dekho jab hum log gm crop zyada produce karte hain so obviously it would improves the production and will raise the farmers income also it reduces the impact of pesticides as well as insecticides during farming that might be great moves for the betterment of the food supply and we can feed a rapidly increasing population because it shows dramatical increase yields which can produce more in small areas of land so there are also disadvantages because this are very much high risks to the disruption of the ecosystem and biodiversity also it increases the cost of cultivation and is more inclined towards marketization of farming and this transgenic crops endangers not only farmers but also the trade and the environment as well so now the move of the geac and respectively by the environment ministry this move will definitely open the pandora's box for commercial use of the gm seeds so proper guidelines and some of the standard operating procedures needs to be framed in case of approval by the respective ministry also we need to strengthen conserve and preserve 
द ट्रेडिशनल सीड्स डेट वुड एंश्योर फूड सिक्योरिटी इन अवर कंट्री तो ये अभी देखते हैं कि यहाँ पे एनवायरमेंट मिनिस्ट्री के द्वारा कैसे यहाँ पे नॉड आता है ओके सो वी कुड सी इट कमिंग इन द लेटर टाइम्स ओके सो अभी यहाँ पे जो नॉड दिया गया है जीई के द्वारा सो नाउ इट विल डायरेक्टली गो टू द एनवायरमेंट मिनिस्ट्री सो लेट सी दैट हाउ द लाइक हाउ दिस एनवायरमेंट मिनिस्ट्री विल डायरेक्टली गो फॉर द क्लियरिंग ऑफ सच नंबर ऑफ प्रपोजल्स ओके तो यहाँ पे जितने भी वेराइटीज होता है सब वेराइटीज में करते हैं या कोई लिमिटेड वेराइटीज में एनवायरमेंट मिनिस्ट्री अपने आप को सिमिट करते हैं ये बाद में हम लोग का देखा जाएगा चलो नेक्स्ट पे आते हैं ईवी फार्म्स दैट इज द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक व्हीकल्स फार्म्स वेट बैटरी स्वैपिंग तो यहाँ पे पहली बात समझना होता है कि हम लोग के लिए कि लाइक व्हाट इज बैटरी स्वैपिंग ठीक है सो नाउ इफ आई गिव द डेफिनेशन ऑफ बैटरी स्वैपिंग इट इज अ मैकेनिज्म दैट इन्वॉल्व एक्सचेंजिंग डिचार्ज बैटरीज फॉर चार्ज वन ठीक है और दिस प्रोवाइड द फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी टू चार्ज दिस बैटरी सेपरेटली एंड कीप द व्हीकल इन ऑपरेशनल मोड विदाउट negligible downtime so this battery swapping is generally used for smaller vehicles such as two wheelers and three wheelers with smaller batteries that are easier to swap compared to four wheelers and e buses although solutions are emerging for this larger segments as well to abhi yahan pe jo hum log ka battery swapping ka impact hai on innovation this is directly growing because today this is a very important element which have uh, the things associated with the procurement of this ev vehicles because the policy of this is directly aiming to improve the efficiency of the battery swapping ecosystem that is for the two and the three wheelers and as far the government's draft policy with this uh, battery swapping we could see that all metropolitan cities with a population of above 40 lakhs will be prioritized for the development of a battery swapping network under the first phase okay and thereby we could see that it has got this policies that are evs uh, policies this evs are traditionally purchased with fixed batteries which can only be charged using the power supply will while housed within the ev so like fueling stations for conventional vehicles adequate affordable accessible and reliable charging networks are a prerequisite for the mass ev adoption however developing charging infrastructure still takes a significantly longer time and there is a constraint space in urban areas so therefore the government of india in its recent budget of 2022 and 23 has announced that that the center would be introducing a battery swapping policy and interoperability standards in order to improve efficiency in the ev ecosystem because aaj agar ye policy lagao mein aa gaya then there would have been lot of significance it will decarbonize the transport sector it will leverage even the ev market because under the mandate of india committed to achieving a net zero target by 2070 this is a very important requirement of this country because india is directly also a signatory to the united nations framework convention on climate change okay also if i leverage this market if i see about the overall indian ev market which was packed at around us dollar 1500 billion okay and this is in 2021 which is expected to grow to around 15000 billion dollar by 2027 तो सोच सकते हो 47 परसेंट का यहाँ पे इंक्रीज हो रहा है तो डे फोर टूडे इवन द गवर्नमेंट इज डायरेक्टली लॉन्चिंग सम ऑफ द वेरियस रिलेटेड गवर्नमेंटल प्रोग्राम्स सपोजेडली आई एम कैन से अबाउट द फेम स्कीम दैट इज द फास्ट फॉर एडॉप्शन एंड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ द हाइब्रिड एंड इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स ऑल्सो द प्रोडक्ट लिंक इंसेंटिव स्कीम्स फॉर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एडवांस केमिस्ट्री सेल ऑल्सो अनदर पी एल आई स्कीम दैट इज द प्रोडक्ट लिंक इंसेंटिव स्कीम्स विच ऑल्सो कवर दिस ई वी स्टार्टअप्स was also approved by the automotive sector within a budgetary outlay so yahan pe agar india ko 2070 tak carbon neutral banana hai apne desh ko which lessly relying on crude oil as well as the non fossil fuels then obviously we have to consider swapping this batteries and therefore such policy is the need of the hour theek hai chalo next pe aate hain bats evicted from manipur ke theek hai to yahan pe jo uh, bats ka scenario hai यहाँ पे मणिपुर में एक वी कैन सी अबाउट ये देख सकते हो यहाँ पे ठीक है सो यहाँ पे एक केव है विच इज नोन एज द खंगी केव ठीक है सो रिसेंटली व्हाट वी हैव सीन दैट दिस बैट्स ओके विच आर बेसिकली द लार्जेस्ट मेमलियन ग्रुप आफ्टर रोडन्स विथ ओवर अराउंड थर्टीन हंड्रेड स्पेसीज ओके सो डे ऑकर ऑन ऑल कंटिनेंस एक्सेप्ट एंटार्क्टिका एंड आर पर्टिकुलरली डाइवर्स इन साउथ एशिया ओके सो दे roost in large colonies on trees tree hollows caves rocks crevices and abandoned man made structures and these bats play a unique role in maintaining the ecosystem structure 
making a singular contribution to our food production economy as well as well-being because they are the only mammals capable of true flight and have a unique sonar based echolocation mechanisms to capture prey at night so these bats are of very important because these bats are significant for seed dispersal they are significant for pollination they are significant for their production boost because ye bats kya khate hain insects ko khate hain which are a major problem of agriculture to ye jab agar kha lenge to obviously reproduction boost honge so the soil fertility will also increase because the bats contribute significantly to the soil fertility and nutrient distribution due to their large numbers high mobility and varied habitats of roosting and foraging okay so this bat droppings which provide some of the organic impletus to some of the soil and facilitate the nutrient transfer to the soil also this ha bats have got some of the health benefits because several species of bats in fact contribute to human health by reducing populations of mosquitoes and other insect vectors that spread malaria dengue chikungunya and various other diseases so their conservation is of very prime importance today if you see about the iucn about 5% of the bats are categorized as endangered and another 11% are categorized as data deficient further some of the species of fruit bats are categorized under schedule 5 of the wildlife protection act and along with the vermin species like rats making it difficult to legally conserve them so now if i see about the categorization of this bats okay तो यहाँ पे जो ये मणिपुर के खंगुई केव है ठीक है तो मणिपुर के एक उखरुल डिस्ट्रिक्ट है ये वाला डिस्ट्रिक्ट जो देख सकते हो ठीक है दिस इज द होल ऑफ मणिपुर वी कैन सी तो यहाँ पे ये उखरुल डिस्ट्रिक्ट में दैट इज द खंगुई केव्स है इस केव्स यहाँ पे एक केव है तो इस केव्स को ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वॉर टू ओके यहाँ पे जितने भी बिकॉज ऑफ द एग्रेशन यहाँ पे जपानी सोल्जर्स है ठीक है तो ये लोग चिपते थे यहाँ पे ठीक है जस्ट बिकॉज वी कुड सी दैट ड्यूरिंग द टाइम दिस होल रीजन वॉज अंडर द कमांड ऑफ द ब्रिटिश एरिया तो यहाँ से ही घुसे थे कौन से जापानीज लोग घुसे थे तो यहाँ पे ये लोग थोड़ा शेल्टर लेते थे यहाँ पे दे लोग यहाँ पे चिपते थे तो दिस एरिया इज ऑफ जियोलॉजिकली इम्पोर्टेंट एरिया ये एक पेलियोलॉटिक टाइम के एक केव है तो यहाँ पे अभी बैट्स रहते थे लेकिन जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द सीनिक ब्यूटी ऑफ दिस केव्स यहाँ पे सब बैट्स को मारा गया जस्ट टू मेक वे फॉर टूरिज्म ठीक है और लोग यहाँ पे बैट्स को कैप्चर भी करते हैं because it is very much high demand in the markets iska illegal sale bhi hota hai theek hai so uh, therefore we can see that just because of the cats this bats getting uh, illicitly killed as well as also making way for transition for tourism to so, yahan pe inka jo ecosystem hai in ecosystem ko yahan pe in log ka loss ho raha hai so therefore the conservationist okay over here they are very much focused so that they could directly improve the conditions of the bats and could save these conditions of the bats which are very much prominent in this region theek hai to ye jo caves hai this caves may be very important ye pooch sakta hai ki kaun sa cave mein do we can see about recently in news which have got relation with the bats so this is basically the khangui caves basically in the region of ukrul that is in the northeastern portion of manipur that is the northeastern province of manipur district ठीक है तो यहाँ पे ये केव है और यहाँ पे ही इन बैट्स को मारा गया है क्राप किया गया है सो डेट टू मेक वे फॉर टूरिज्म ठीक है चलो नेक्स्ट पे आते हैं लाचित बोरपुरकन के ऊपर एक बात है तो मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन वेब पोर्टल ऑन लाचित बोरपुरकन रिलीज सो वी ऑल नो अबाउट दैट को रिलेटिंग विद फोर हंड्रेड बर्थ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ द आहूम आर्मी जनरल मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन एंड वेब पोर्टल वर लॉन्च ओके तो इस वेब पोर्टल में प्रोवाइड करेगा क्या प्लेटफॉर्म टू द पीपल रिसाइडिंग एंड सामन बियॉन्ड इंक्लूडिंग फॉरन कंट्रीज टू पे ट्रिब्यूट्स टू द ग्रेट आर्मी जनरल इन द फॉर्म ऑफ राइट अप्स एंड एस एस ठीक है तो यहाँ पे दिस थिंग्स इज डायरेक्टली गेटिंग पब्लिश तो हम लोग सब जानते हैं अबाउट लाची फू बॉर्फुकॉन ठीक है सो ही वॉज अ कमांडर एंड अ बॉर्फुकॉन इन द अहोम किंगडम लोकेटेड इन द प्रेजेंट डे असाम इंडिया वी ऑल नो सो ही इज नोन फॉर हिज लीडरशिप इन दिक्सटीन सेवेंटी वन बैटल ऑफ सराय घाट okay and that what a drawn out attempt by mughal forces under the command of ram singh one to take over ahom kingdom and he died about a later this year that is because of his illness okay so we all know lachit bawfukan was the youngest son of the mumait amuli borborwa he was the first borborwa of upper assam and also the commander in chief of the ahom army and the king pratap singha his father mumait amuli borborwa was a bonded labor against a loan of 4 rupees in his early life and he later turned to minister and a noble so he was chosen for the position of borfukon by chakradwas singha so if i say about lachit borfukon so after being defeated by lachit and his forces the mughal army sailed up to the brahmaputra river from dhaka towards assam advancing to guwahati so the mughal army under ram singh consisted of around 30000 infantry 
15,000 archers, 18,000 Turkish cavalry, 5,000 gunners and over 1,000 cannons besides a large flotilla of boats. So Ram Singh, the Mughal commander-in-chief, failed to make any advance against any Assamese army during the first phase of the war and an arrow carrying a letter by Ram Singh telling that Lachit had been paid rupees one lakh and should evacuate Guwahati, which was fired into the Ahom camp, which eventually reached the Ahom king, that is Chakradva Singha. So although the king started to doubt Lachit's sincerity and patriotism, his prime minister, Atan Buragohai, convinced the king this was just a trick against Lachit. So Lachit Barfukan was very much victorious and the Mughals were forced to retreat from Guwahati. Okay? So therefore, this man, November 24, in his birthday, we directly celebrate the Lachit Divas okay? to commemorate the heroism of this very man that is Lachit Barfukan and the victory of the Assamese army at the Battle of Saraigat. Okay? So we also have got a medal which is known as the Lachit Barfukan Gold Medal that is given to the best cadet of NDA. That is the best passing out cadet of the NDA is confirmed this Lachit Balfukan gold medal every year from 1999. Okay. So also we have got a Mahabir Lachit Award. It is presented to notable personalities of Assam by the Thai Ahom Yuba Parishad. Okay. We also have the Lachit Balfukan's Maidam, which was constructed in the memory of Lachit Balfukan at Jorhat Assam. And it is 8 km far from the famous Holong Par Gibbon Sanctuary. So his last remains of Balfukan were laid under this tomb, that is the Maidam, constructed by Swargodyo Udaditya Singha. Okay, so this is something associated with this man that is the great general or the great la, army general of the Ahoms that is Lachit Barfukan. Okay, next path. Editorial, that is the lastly. So despite crackdown, pollution sharply spikes in south and west of Delhi. So basically, here Delhi ke baad bola gaya hai. Okay, so abhi uh, pe recently we have listened to Arvind Kejriwal ji, aapke jo Delhi ke CM hai. तो वो बहुत बढ़ चढ़ के बहुत बता रहे थे कि लाइक इस बार बिकॉज़ ऑफ द रिस्ट्रिक्शंस यहां पर दिल्ली में कुछ पोल्यूशन नहीं हुआ है लेकिन ये ऐसी बात नहीं है ठीक है पोल्यूशन हुआ है ठीक है सो बेसिकली अभी इस टाइम हम लोग ने 24 अक्टूबर को क्या किए थे अपना दिवाली सेलिब्रेट किए थे जहां पे बर्स्ट क्रैकर्स एंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स हुए थे ठीक है तो यहां पे बस अभी फिलहाल के लिए दिल्ली का सीएम ओके दिल्ली का जो प्रेजेंट सीएम है तो वो भी बढ़ा चढ़ा के बात बोला गया है लेकिन ऐसी बात नहीं है so today we could see that 24 October को हम लोग ने यहाँ पे Diwali organize किए थे लेकिन actuality में अगर मैं बोलूँ तो जितने भी हम लोग का यहाँ पे stable burning है ठीक है तो अभी बस season आ रहा है रबी crops का तो अभी stable burning बस शुरू हुआ है in the earlier times what we can see that the stable burning correlates simultaneously with Diwali तो इसलिए जो smoke form होता है वो ज़्यादा हो जाता है तो आज जो stable burning हुआ है तो generally 10th November से Stable burning jada se jada shuru ho jayega. Okay? And we can see the effects of this stubble burning by 15 November in Delhi. Okay? Or wo peak pe kab rahega? December tak rahega. Okay? So, abhi generally 10th November, 15 November ke dheere dheere karke hum log stubble burning ko aage badhayenge. So, abhi wahan pe jitne bhi farmers log hai, stubble burning abhi kar bhi nahi rahe. So, if you visit in this time period towards the northwestern corridor, that is Punjab, Haryana mein jaoge, western UP mein jaoge, तो वहाँ पे हम लोग को purely दिखाई देगा about stubble burnings, ठीक है? तो ये stubble burning के हिसाब से we could see that अभी 24 अक्टूबर को यहाँ पे दीपावली हो गया था, ठीक है? अभी तक stubble burning शुरू नहीं हुआ था, इसीलिए दिल्ली का जो एक clean atmosphere है, clean environment है, वो दिखाई दिया है, ठीक है? लेकिन असली बात ये नहीं है, असली बात है we all know that 10th November से stubble burning in peak पे रहेगा। ओके okay, मतलब 10 नवंबर से शुरू होगा 15 नवंबर तक ये दिल्ली में पहुंच जाएंगे और 15 नवंबर के बाद अराउंड 15 टू 20 नवंबर धीरे-धीरे करके ये पीक पे रहेगा एंड इट विल रीच इट्स पीक एंटिल दिसंबर ठीक है तो तब देखना क्या हालत होता है लेकिन इस बार बज गए ठीक है तो इसको इसलिए एक पॉलिटिकल मुद्दा बना लिए वो लोग ठीक है तो ये चलता रहेगा लेकिन बेसिकली हम लोग को ये चीज जानना पड़ेगा कि स्टेबल बर्निंग कब शुरू होता है एंड ऊपर से और दो तीन जानना पड़ेगा क्या चीज अबाउट व्हाट इज एयर पोल्यूशन एंड व्हाट इज देयर रिस्पेक्टिव पोल्यूटेंट्स सो वी ऑल नो अबाउट द एयर पोल्यूशन व्हिच इज बेसिकली द प्रेजेंस ऑफ कंपाउंड्स द एयर पोल्यूटेंट्स इन द एटमॉस्फेयर दैट आर वेरी मच हजर्डस टू द ह्यूमन हेल्थ एंड द हेल्थ ऑफ इवन द अदर लिविंग थिंग्स और इंपेयरिंग द क्लाइमेट और मटेरियल्स so there are various different types of air pollutants such as gases, be it the ammonia, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxides, methane, carbon dioxide, and the CFCs that are the chlorofluorocarbons, which may be both organic as well as the non-organics. So ye ham loka ek bahut important elements hai to make the air very much de deteriorated. So we all know about the primary and the secondary pollutants. So primary pollutants kaun sa hai? 
दैट डायरेक्टली कॉज एयर पोल्यूशन दे आर नोन एज प्राइमरी पोल्यूटेंट और सेकेंडरी पोल्यूटें कौन सा है दैट आर प्रोड्यूस एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ द मिक्सिंग एंड इंटरक्शन ऑफ द प्राइमरी पोल्यूटेंट्स सो दिस एयर पोल्यूशन विच कॉजेज अ लॉट मेनी नंबर ऑफ डिजीजेस एलर्जीज एंड इवन डेथ्स टू ह्यूमेंस सो इवन बोथ द ह्यूमन एक्टिविटी एज वेल एज नेचुरल प्रोसेस ऑल्सो कैन जनरेट दिस एयर पोल्यूशन ठीक है तो हम लोग जानते हैं कि लाइक बिकॉज ऑफ दिस एयर पोल्यूशन इट इज हर्टिंग द लिविंग थिंग्स लाइक एनिमल्स एंड फूड क्रॉप्स एज वेल एज ऑल्सो इम्पेयरिंग द बिल्ड एनवायरमेंट और द नेचुरल एनवायरमेंट कॉजिंग क्लाइमेट चेंज ओजन डिप्लेशन और एज वेल एज द हैबिटेड डिस्ट्रक्शन ठीक है तो ये हम लोग का पता है हम लोग का अबाउट एयर पोल्यूटेंस इसके लिए बहुत रेगुलेशन भी निकला है ठीक है वी नो अबाउट द कंसिक्वेंसिस ऑफ दिस एयर पोल्यूशन which is uh, directly killing a lot many number of living organisms okay so yahan pe jo pm 2.5 matter hai pm 10 matter se ye regularly increase ho raha hai theek hai even the national air quality index jo hum log bolte hai aqi reports jis jo launch kiya gaya tha 2014 mein with an outline number one color one description so the measurement of the air quality is based on basically eight pollutants namely the particulate matter 10 2.5 nitrogen dioxide sulfur dioxide carbon monoxide ozone ammonia and leak okay so this aqi has six categories of air quality that are good satisfactory moderate polluted poor very poor and severe okay to agar hum log is six basic facts pe hum log jaye okay to yahan pe jo good hai to aqi ranking mein good 0 to 50 hona padega okay satisfactory mein 51 to 100 hona padega okay 101 to 200 mein kya aayega moderate aayega okay then 201 to 300 mein kya aayega poor aayega then 301 to 400 kya aayega very poor aayega theek hai then lastly if you see about 401 to around 500 to ye kya aayega it is severe that is affecting many health and people seriously impacting those with existing diseases to iske liye hum log bahut sare ek mechanisms nikle hain so as to commit jaise hum log ka bhi 10% ethanol hai going with the fame scheme to ye sab ek ek mechanisms hai ओके इसके बाद और एक हम लोग का अप्रोच है दैट इज द सफर अप्रोच ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ अर्थ साइंसेस दैट इज द सिस्टम ऑफ एयर क्वालिटी एंड वेदर फोरकास्टिंग एंड रिसर्च व्हिच इज टू एक्सेस बोथ द सिटीज ओवरऑल पोल्यूशन लेवल एंड द लोकल एयर क्वालिटी टू गॉज हाउ द क्लीन एयर इज अ मेजर इन द मेट्रोपोलिस तो इसके बेसिस पे हम लोग ने इंडिजिनियसली डेवलप्ड इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ट्रॉपिकल मेट्रोलॉजी के थ्रू से हम लोग ने बहुत सारा चीज ऑपरेशनलाइज किया है सो एज टू मेक द अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम फॉर द एयर क्वालिटी इन दिस respective cities which are basically monitored through some of the bad air quality index so today if you see about the world health organization's four pillar strategy which is adopted through a resolution of 2015 it is to address the adverse health effects of air pollution and the four pillar strategy calls for an enhanced global response in creating or in resisting the effects of the air pollution to ye four pillar strategy kon kon sa hai expanding the knowledge base monitoring and reporting ग्लोबल लीडरशिप एंड कोऑर्डिनेशन एंड इंस्टीट्यूशनल कैपेसिटी स्ट्रेंथनिंग सो इसके साथ हम लोग अगर प्रोएक्टिव मेजर्स ले इनोवेटिव मेजर्स ले रेस्पॉन्सिबल सिटीजन के हिसाब से हम लोग थोड़ा बहुत आगे बढ़ जाए देन फाइटिंग एयर पोल्यूशन विल बी अ नेक्स्ट परव्यू ऑफ एवरी वंस कैपेसिटी एंड एज अ रिजल्ट वी नीड्स टू हैव सम ऑफ द कोऑर्डिनेटेड एक्टिविटीज दैट इंक्लूड ऑल रिलेवेंट पार्टीज बी इट द फेडरल स्टेट बी इट द म्यूनिसपैलिटीज बी इट द जनरल पब्लिक एंड एवरी इंडिविजुअल शुड बी कंसिडर्ड एन दिस only then we can consider about the air pollution index that is totally deteriorating in our country capital theek hai to ye tha about the analysis of this respective topic theek hai to ye last tha about we could see the five number of mcqs to ye attempt kar lena you will get the answers of this mcqs in tomorrow's pdf also if you join our whatsapp as well as the telegram channel you can get the updates today only okay so we have got our main scan sir please do write and send it to us so that's all for today thank you and jai hind